<laughs> it's a different feel today, and I'm sure you're wondering uh, why I'm showing up, you know, like, like an African farmer. Uh, I'm an African, but, well, I, I'm not a farmer, I'm a, I'm a preacher, but today we're getting into uh, some part of the Word of God as we continue in our teaching series, Grow, uh, where we will definitely examine uh, how uh, things grow in the farm and the dynamics of, uh, of growth in your life and my life compared to Jesus' words when he talked about how things grow naturally in the farm, the process. So I'm speaking uh, to the subject of the secret of increase. I know you want to, if you're like me, you want to experience increase in your life. This season that we're talking about growth, you want to see tangible increase in your life. That's why you should call somebody close by and let them know that we're getting into the Word of God today. Let them know PG is looking different uh, and it's an African feel to this today. It's an African farm feel as we get into the Word of God together. Uh, I, I want you to prepare yourself, share this video with somebody, invite somebody to join us. And I, I, I know that God is about to transform and change your life. Now, before I pray, uh, let, 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 me, let, me, let me take this off temporarily. I'm going to come back to my props uh, as we get into the Word of God. But I need you to follow me very, very carefully. Let's share a word of prayer together. Our Father, we ask that you breathe upon your Word today. Let it minister grace to every hearer. Let no one be the same again. Lord, we have dedicated this time as a time of growth, of increase, of multiplication, of enlargement in our lives. And it starts with the state of our spirit. So Holy Spirit, we ask that you pour out yourself upon every individual engaged on our platforms today. Let your word come with simplicity and accuracy. Let somebody be set free. Let there be healing. Let there be deliverance. And let there be a mighty increase. The fullness of God. Let that be our portion today. In Jesus' precious name. And all who believe say, believe in Amen. Praise God. Praise God. The secret of increase. The secret of increase. Last week, uh, we stopped uh, at the point where we're discussing uh, uh, the, the, the destiny fulfillment continuum. And if you remember, I said, uh, the, the, the trajectory is that we all start from being saved or getting saved, but we don't stop there. From getting saved to getting freedom to discovering purpose and then uh, to living a life of impact. And when you go through that trajectory, you see there's a need uh, for, for increase, for growth, if one will actually be able to live it out the way we described it last week. So, we want to look at the secrets. In the words of Jesus, what, what are the secrets of increase? How can I move from point A to point B, like we said last week, how can I continue to see increase in my life? I love to read uh, from, from, from the Bible, from the book of Matthew chapter 13. Matthew 13, Jesus was speaking about the secret of increase and he spoke about how things grow. What are the major elements in making a seed grow in the ground? And eventually he said that seed in itself is the word of God. Matthew 13, when you read verse 3 uh, to 6, he said, I told many stories in the form of parables. I'm reading from New Living Translation. I told many stories in form of parables such as this one. He told many stories in form of parables just like this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. And as he scattered them across the field, some fell on the footpath. And the birds came and hit them. Others, other seeds fell on the shallow soil with underlying rock. And the seeds sprouted quickly. And because the soil was shallow, but uh, the plant soon wilted under the hot sun. And since they didn't have enough depth, they died. Still other seeds 
or fell on fertile soil, and they produced crop that was 30, 60, and even a hundred times as much as had been planted. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Those were the words of Jesus as he described the process by which things grow in the farm. The process by which uh, a farmer can experience increase in 30, or 60, and 100 fold. Let's start from here today. In the same words of Jesus, Jesus said in John 8.32, he said, And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Though saved, many Christians are still bound. And from time to time, you need to ask yourself the question, am I bound or am I, am I free? You may be saved. You may be a follower of Jesus Christ, but you may not be free. And ladies and gentlemen, freedom is a prerequisite to increase. You cannot increase in bondage. So as you follow me carefully today, I need you to understand something. That being saved is not enough. The plans that God has for you is that you go beyond being saved to gaining freedom so that you can live a consistent life of increase. So many Christians are still controlled by the nature of sin. This, you know, bondage or control limits destiny fulfillment. I need you to understand that. It limits destiny fulfillment, frustrates available grace, and restricts our capacity for increase. And that capacity for increase is what we're addressing today because I believe God wants to take your capacity for increase to the next level. Say amen, everyone who believes. Uh, today, I need you to understand something. As you open up your heart to the word of God, that God uh, is set to bring you into a season of increase. And I mean it in all ramifications, in every area of your life, Somebody, you may be having a good relational experience right now, but you're stagnated career-wise. This season is a season that God wants to open you up for all-round increase. All-round increase. In every area of life, you get home and you're seeing increase. You're at work, you're seeing increase. Uh, you are in, your, in business, you're seeing increase. In your spiritual life, you're seeing increase. No dryness at all. Say amen, somebody. That's the plan of God for you for this season. Yeah. And you should be happy about it. You should rejoice about it because God has you in mind. And it starts with you opening up your heart to his word, opening up your heart to what he has in mind for you. You know, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, in New Living Translation, it says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. By changing the way you think, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. You will know the will of God. You will know the perfect will of God, the pleasing will of God, which is to give you all-round increase. And the scripture says uh, that the way to do that is not to get accustomed to the thinking of this world. Now, you need to understand the first raw material for transformation or for mind renewal, for processing thought so that our thoughts can align with the thoughts of God. According to Isaiah 55, when you read from verse 10, he said, my ways are not your ways, neither are my thoughts your thoughts. As the heavens are far from the heart, so are my thoughts far from your thoughts and my ways far from your ways. And when you align your thought with my thought, then our ways can also align. And the number one ingredient, the number one thing, uh, raw material for, for mind renewal, for processing thoughts, so that it aligns with the will of God, is the word of God. Is the word of God. When I start to get the word of God into my spirit, I start to process life situations, I start to process issues of life from a fundamental point of view, which is a biblical worldview. Can I ask you a question right now? Don't lose me at all. I'm discussing the secrets of increase. And I'm saying that you cannot have increase without freedom. And Jesus said, it is the truth that brings freedom. And for you to, to appreciate the truth, you have to renew your mind. 
Romans 12 and verse 2 that we read there, it said, don't get accustomed. Don't get, uh, don't, 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 don't copy the behavior and custom of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. It is when you allow the Holy Spirit to transform you into a new person by changing the way you think that you, you, you will start to appreciate the Word of God. You will start to allow the Word of God to grow in your heart because that is uh, uh, the, 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 the agent of transformation. That is the, 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 you know, the active ingredient in your transformational process. When, when your mind starts to engage the world, when your mind starts to engage the world, you know, the word transform there is the word uh, 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 metamorpho in, in, in Greek, which is where we get the English word metamorphosis from. God wants you to metamorphosize. He wants you and I to change from one level to the other. We have to be gaining freedom until we get into full destiny fulfillment. That's how we move from one point to the other. Uh, the cantankerous person can become a joyful person. Yeah. The angry person, the bitter person can become a sweet person. It, the person goes through metamorphosis. You move to a new phase of life. And then you start to embrace who you are in God. And the process for that is the process of embracing the truth. Truth is the access code for freedom. And like I said, it's not enough to be born again. You have to gain freedom. And truth is the access code for freedom. When you know the truth, you, you get transformed. And that transformation is the freedom that we're talking about. So that the things that you to hold you down will no longer be able to hold you down. I'm going to go through a few things that, 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 that seek to hold us down. But before that, uh, this, this scripture in Daniel 11 and 32 is also very strong as we discuss this subject of transformation that will lead to mighty increase in your life. The Bible says in Daniel 11 and verse 32, he said, And such as violate the covenant, he shall pervert and seduce with flattery. But the people who know their God shall prove themselves strong and shall stand firm and do exploits for God. Yeah. The people who do know their God, who do know their God, there are different levels of knowing. But, but the knowing that the scripture is talking about here, if you want to be somebody who will engage increase, who will engage growth, and who will do exploit for God, and do exploit in your personal life, and live a life of impact, then you must be that kind of person who really know, know. He says, the ones who know their God shall be strong. Jesus said in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth. There's something about the knowing. I remember, you know, in the book of Genesis, the Bible says, Adam knew his wife. It's that same knowing. It talks about a level of intimacy that can cause a transaction or, or a transference of seed, a transference of substance into the other person. That uh, when you, you know God in such a way, you know the truth in such a way that the truth is no longer alien to you. The truth is not something that somebody's talked about. The truth is something that is now resident in you. And that is what triggers a transformation that can lead to a mighty increase in your life. Say amen, everyone. I need you to understand this morning, this is not the kind of teaching, uh, you know, that just makes you, you know, feel happy. It's the kind of teaching that you need to seriously ingest, get it down into your spirit. If you want to grow into the fullness of what God has in mind for you, the secret, uh, real secret to growth, to increase, is the incubation of divine truth, which is the word of God. You know the truth, the truth sets you free. I was interacting with a friend not too long ago who happened to be a single guy doing well in business. And he said, PG, everywhere I go, people tell me, oh, you are single and free. You know, like some people say, I'm young and free. He says, people tell me you're single and free. You're making a lot of money. So you are free to spend your money, live your life the way you want it. Don't be in a hurry to get entangled with anyone. You know, you don't have to get into a relationship early. Just be enjoying your money. God has given you money early in life and you're still single. Just enjoy your money. And as I was having this interaction with this young man, uh, 
I, I told him, I said, don't be fooled by thinking that you are free. There are many things that are hanging around people today, and they don't know that they are not free. Real freedom is your capacity to choose what you want to be bound to. But the moment you get bound to that thing, you cannot determine the consequence. Yeah. Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. He said, and I will give you rest. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What he was saying is that there's one burden and one yoke that you need in life. Just get hooked on it. Get bound to it. Your life will be easy. And that is the yoke of truth or the burden of truth that brings real freedom. You know the truth? Somebody can get bound to alcohol, can get bound to, 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 to sex. You choose what you want to be bound to, but you don't choose the consequence of your action. The consequence of each action has already been embedded into the universe. It's part of the constitution of the universe that when I am bound to this, this is how my life will go. And Jesus said, when you come to me and you get bound to me and to my yoke and to my burden, I can tell you how your life is going to be. My burden is light and my yoke, my yoke is easy. And your life will only move in the right direction if you choose to be bound to me. Say amen, everyone. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. So truth is the access code for freedom. And those who do know their God, know intimately. Know like a man will know his wife. Those are the people that will do exploit and experience real increase. So intimacy with God provides the environment for uh, the manifestation of the implanted word. The manifestation of the word of God being planted in your heart. That's what intimacy with God does. When you allow intimacy, something flows from God into your own life. From God to you. From God to you. John chapter 1 and verse 14. The Bible says, And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld this glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. When the word of God comes into your heart, it's the description is more like the description that we saw here. The word becomes flesh. The word takes a, 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 you know, a, 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 becomes a part of you. And that's what leads uh, to the, uh, the manifestation of the increase that we're talking about today. Why Christians may still be bound to addiction, to negative emotion, to ungodly lifestyles, to sickness, to poverty, to hopelessness, and all kinds of things that people may be bound to. One thing is certain. One thing is certain. That God wants you and I free. Jesus died that you and I may be free. But much more than that, that freedom is available in the word of God. That freedom is available in the word of God. It's available in the word of God. And as we go towards the end times, what we're going to be seeing is that people will start to lose appetite for the word. We start to lose appetite for the truth. People will, people will start to create their own truth. In fact, what they say right now is that we are in the post-truth era. And the truth is that the truth can never be in the past. It's always relevant. Yeah. Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forever. And his word, the same today, yesterday, and forever. And if you want to see consistent increase in your life, you have to be that kind of person who is willing and open to embrace the truth of God's word. Yeah. To embrace the truth of God's word. God Sword was the ingredient with which our world was created. And if I want to see increase in my life, I must be open to seeing God's word becoming a regular part of my life. 
Somebody may be saying, PG, uh, how do you mean? John chapter 1, when, the same John chapter 1, when I go to verse 1 to 5, it says in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word, uh, <laughs> the word was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him, nothing was made that was made. And in Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and that light shines in darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. Yeah. When the light of God's word starts to shine in your life, every darkness disappears. Confusion disappears. Discouragement disappears. Sicknesses disappear. Anything that looks like darkness will start to disappear. And you see the work of God, uh, you know, coming to light in your life. Like Message Translation talks about uh, John 1 and 14. He said the world uh, 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 moved into the neighborhood. It, it, it describes it in such a way that uh, when the word of God comes into your life, it's like something new has just come into your neighborhood and everything starts to change around you. Now, I haven't said all this. Somebody may be saying, I've been reading the Bible for 10 years. I've been saved for, for you know, almost forever, for 20 years. And I, I still have this struggle or that struggle. And I'm not seeing this kind of increase or that kind of increase that you are describing in my life. That's why I'm bringing this message to you today. Because it's time for you to start to reanalyze your understanding of your Christianity and of the Word of God. Now, there are two factors that I want us to look into. If you want to engage real increase with the Word of God, if you want to break every bondage, if you want to break anything that holds you down, if you want to really experience freedom so that you can move on to increase, I need you to note these two things. One, that lack of appetite for truth has become endemic in Christianity today. Most people profess to be Christians, but they now lack appetite for the word of God. They lack appetite for the truth. They don't treat the word of God as the seed that Jesus said it is. Because you know that for you to bring forth, I'm going to get into it in a bit, for you to bring forth from the ground. That's why uh, I came in like, like a farmer today just to demonstrate something. I'm going to get back into it. But for you to bring forth, you have to have a mindset about the seed. You must have some, some bit of, you know, appetite for the truth. Appetite for food is what leads to physical increase. If you want to see a child that, 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 that looks malnourished or suffering from kwashoko, is a child that has lost his appetite for food or a child that does not have access to food. And when you have access to food, or you've lost your appetite for food, you are not better than the person who uh, doesn't have access to food. And so many people live in parts of the world, or many people are not even saved to be able to get the word of God into themselves. Uh, when we see them, we cannot expect to see the supernatural manifesting in their lives. But if you are a believer, we must see the manifestation of the Spirit of God in your life from time to time, and what triggers it is the intake of the Word of God that will become a part of your life. That's why the scripture says in 1 Peter 2 and verse 2, which is one of our anchor scriptures for this, uh, this series of teaching, grow. It says, as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the world that you may grow thereby. Desire the pure milk of the world that you may grow thereby. That word desire is like saying, don't lose your appetite. Don't lose your appetite. We need our hunger, our desire, our appetite for the word of God to be restored if we want to see increase in our lives. Enough of using only your head to do business. I mean your intellect, your brain to do business. There are things that God wants, directions God wants to move you and it's going to have to quicken the word of God in you for you to understand what to do in that situation. But if you don't have appetite for the word, you will not know what to do in that situation. So we need our hunger back for the world to gain freedom so that you can experience increase. There must be a hunger and a strong appetite for the word of God. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 6, the Bible says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. They shall be filled. God is always ready and willing 
to fill people up when they, they, their appetite is up, when they're, they're hungry for the word of God. What is your appetite level for the word of God? What, what, what kind of affinity or hunger do you have for revelation knowledge? You know the way Job described it? I love it. Job 23 and verse number 12. Job described it in a special way. He said, I've not departed from the commandments of his lips, I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. More than my necessary food. I've treasured the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. We have today believers who would have eaten, uh, you know, three square meals many times a day and they would not even remember that their spirit is famished or that they need a fresh intake of the word of God on a daily basis. As blessed as this generation is, especially for those of us who are used to digital technology, and that's how you can be a part of this service today. You know, you, 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 you have Bible on your phone, Bible on your pad, Bible on your laptop, Bible everywhere. Uh, we're not restricted to paper again. You have audio Bible. You have all kinds of uh, gadgets with which you can get different messages to get into your spirit. When we look into your, 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 your devices, uh, sometimes it's like uh, uh, somebody's double door fridge loaded with all kinds of food, all kinds of drinks. But you can imagine if the person would just walk past the fridge all the time without opening it to take something in. That person can die of hunger. Many people today are very malnourished in the spirit, almost like dying of hunger spiritually making a mess of their lives, making wrong decisions, or falling into wrong hands, making bad judgment in their relational life, making bad decisions in their career path, just flunking everything, just because you have refused to allow the word of God into your heart. Because when the word comes in, the light starts to shine in your heart. And without that light, you can't see a real increase. Genesis chapter 1, when you read from verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. Darkness covered the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the water. And the Bible says, God said, let there be light. And the moment there was light, then there could be creativity. The moment there was light, there could be increase. Uh, every order can come in because there was light. The reason why, as you listen to me right now, there may not be order in your life is because there's no light. When there's light, there will be order. When there's light, uh, there, 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 you know, there will be productivity, there will be creativity. Order, for instance, makes for increase. When there's light, there will be order. And when there's order, you are able to achieve more. You are able to do more. There will be increase in your life. That's why you must allow the word of God to gain entrance into your heart this season. I can't overemphasize that today. And your appetite. We need to work on your appetite. We're going to pray together today after this message. And I want to trust the Holy Spirit to renew your appetite, to heal your appetite. If somebody has been behaving like, you know, like what happens when you're physically unwell, you don't have, you lack appetite for food. In the same vein, when you have been spiritually unwell, you lack appetite for the word of God. And it's time to flip that, turn it around, and be that person that is hungry for the word, that has appetite for the word, that has appetite for the word. So your capacity for different kinds of intakes is necessary this season. Notwithstanding where you are as a believer, it's important for you to understand that there's a tailor-made word for you. In every season. That's what leads to increase. For every season of life, there's a tailor-made word for you. Yeah. And I need to ask you, what are you feeding on this season spiritually? Some people in your, in, in your level right now, like we described last week, uh, maybe you're still uh, uh, a babe spiritually or you're a young child spiritually. The milk may just be okay. The milk may just be okay. That's why 1 Peter 2 and verse 2 that we read earlier on, it says, these are the sincere milk of the world. What's the milk of the world? It's when you're just looking for the basics. Yeah. A milk of the world. You ask the question, how can, I, how, how, how can I pray to God? And God will answer me. Yeah. And then we start to, see, you start to read through the world. Jesus said, pray. When you pray, pray after this manner. Our Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. All that. That's, that's milk of the world. Yeah. How can I be sure that I can release my faith and get to resolve? That's milk of the world. 
And we say faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So you load yourself up, your faith is built up, but now you're still using your faith for material things. It's okay, it's a good place to start. Use your faith for healing, it's okay, it's a good place to start. But there's a point that God will want you to use your faith for a whole people group. God will want you to use your, your faith for a city. God will want you to use your faith for a whole nation. Abraham used his faith for a generation yet unseen. That's where you are going. And at that point, you're going to be moving to the realm of solid food and strong meat. Hebrews chapter 5, when you read from verse 12, Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 12, it talks about uh, uh, strong meat. It, talk, it talks about the, the, these different categories of the word of God that you must interact with. It says, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you. Again, the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have become, uh, you, you have come to need milk, not solid food. Yeah. <laughs> you need milk and not solid food. He said, for everyone who partakes only in milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he's a babe. So if you're a babe, milk is okay. He said, but in verse, verse 14, he says, but solid food. Somebody says solid food. Are you taking solid food spiritually this season? He said, but solid food belongs to those who are full of age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Uh, you know, at some level of your faith, Jesus said, if you lost after a woman in your heart, you have not committed uh, anything physically. He said, to you, it's already a sin. To some people, that's too hard. But that is strong food or solid meat that should get into the heart of a strong believer. So you know that you keep your heart straight. You know that you keep your heart on the word of God. There are some things, you know, uh, that, that are... Nothing to young believers. Not, I mean, going without fellowship with God for a few days, but for a strong believer, no, no, no. The demand is stronger. There are doctrines that you need to understand from the word of God. There are lifestyles that you need to do away with. You know, for a young believer, you can still play around with all kinds of funny entertainment as a believer, as a strong believer, you need to know that the Bible says you, you should take responsibility for your heart. So nothing, not, not just anything going in. Glory be to Jesus. <laughs> so you need to meditate on that uh, Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 14 and ask yourself the question from time to time, am I a candidate for strong meat or strong food? Is that my level right now? And how can I keep at that? Because God has expectation of me. The second thing I want to talk about today, uh, before I wrap this all up, is that many believers also refuse to pay attention to the state of their heart. Refuse to pay attention to the state of their heart. And this is the meat of the matter today. Yeah. We refuse to pay attention to the state of our heart. Like what we read in Matthew 13 from verse 3 down to verse 9 about the parable of, of the sower. The seed, Jesus said, is the word of God. And the potency of the seed notwithstanding, Jesus said, the situation with the soil is also equally important. The word of God cannot lose its value. But when your heart is not in a good place, the word of God may not be able to produce increase in your life. Don't forget we're discussing the secret of increase. The Bible says that Jesus said that a sower, a farmer, went into the farm, into the field. And it was there to throw seed, to sow seed. You know, here in, in Africa, we use all kinds of implements for seed sowing and for planting, like the hoe or the, or, 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 or the cutlass that I have here. You know, all these things are used in the farm. It's either to scoop the floor or, or the soil to be able to put some seed inside it, or you use uh, the hoe uh, to be able to unhurt the, 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 the soil and then plant your seed. There are all, kind, I mean, all kinds of plants that you know uh, like, 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 you know, like tubers, for instance, you have to cut and plant 
uh, the, the tuba. I have the privilege as an African guy to, to get into the farm in, 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 when I was a lot younger. And I see all these things. You see uh, uh, how uh, plantain is planted, how, you know, how all kinds of things are planted in the farm. The farmer will be deliberate to want to put the seed in the right places to maximize his time and increase his productivity. But the picture that Jesus showed us, that the kingdom of God is like a man, a farmer, goes into the, the farm and plants a seed. But the way he does it is that because he wants everybody to have access to the seed, he spreads the seed, throws it on this soil, throws it on another soil, and on another soil, and Jesus described Four kinds of soil. And these four types of soil describe the state of my heart and your heart. Can I ask you a question today? Are you really ready for increase? Do you really want the power of God to be in manifestation in your life, giving you all around increase? The secret to it is for you to take charge of your heart. Take charge of your heart. Jesus described in Matthew 13 from verse 3 down to verse 12, he described uh, this, the, the different kinds of heart, four states of the heart of man that can either limit increase or yield serious increase and consistent increase. One is the pathway or wayside. And he said, Jesus said that the heart that is like the pathway or wayside is the one that has too much activities. High traffic. He said there's a lot of going and coming because the pathway is the highway. Some people's life or heart is like the highway. Too much activities. No time for God. No time for his word. And when a seed of the word gets in there, there is a, you know, there's a lot of distraction. Uh, because you cannot be still enough to incubate the word of God. Can I speak to somebody today? It's time to be still enough to incubate the word of God. Bible says be still and know that I'm God. It's in the place of stillness that your knowledge of God is enhanced. You have time to meditate on the word of God. I know some of us live in cities where we live a fast paced life, but yet we can have a different compartments of time, a time that you, a, a commuting time where you dedicate to listen to the word of God, to get the word of God into your heart, to meditate on the truth. How can the word of God bear fruit in my life so that sickness will no longer be able to hang around me? That's a great question that somebody needs to ask. Rather than saying, oh, this thing is running to our family. Jesus died so that that sickness can stop on your life. So you need to meditate on the word of God enough. And as we go into this series, we're going to deal with some of these things a lot more. So Jesus talked about the pathway or the wayside heart. Is that the kind of heart that you have? Nothing stays there. He said the birds of the air because so many activities, everybody has access to the pathway. You know, people speak into your life who have no business speaking into your life, especially in this age of social media. WhatsApp groups, Facebook groups. Instagram, mind the kind of people you follow because whoever you follow, you have given access to your life. When you wake up in the morning and you carry your phone, you're flipping through Instagram. If you follow a dirty person, the image you may see may be a dirty image. If you belong to a WhatsApp group where death is being thrown around, mud slinging and all that and all kinds of things, you wake up in the morning, instead of you to be meditating on how God is going to bring increase into your life, you are reading things uh, that will throw your mind in all kinds of ways. Even if you have a seed in your heart, it will be snatched out. That's the wayside art. Just trying uh, to make this as practical as possible for you to understand what I'm talking about. There's eye traffic. He said the birds of the air will come and pick it up because it's just by the wayside. By the wayside. Secondly, is the stony heart. The stony heart. The thing about the stony heart is that there's so many underlying rocks. That's how Jesus described it. Underlying rocks. Matthew 13, verse 4 and 5 talks about the stony heart with underlining rocks. It says, because there are rocks there, uh, the heart does not have depth. So when a seed is sown into it, the seed is not able to develop roots. 
And because the seed is not able to develop root, it will wither quickly. That's what the scripture says. It withers quickly. The rocks there uh, talks about, uh, you know, all kinds of underlining things, weights, on, uh, uh, you know, mindsets that we contend with, that will not allow the word of God to sink in. That just limits the penetration of the word. And it says this kind of heart is the kind of heart of a person that uh, when they hear the word, they are easily excited. You know, because uh, the thing sprouts easily. Though it has no death, but they are easily excited. Their voices are loudest in church. Oh, before you say two, they've said three. But is he really entering? Is he really get, getting in? They're full of emotion. There's a difference between emotional reaction. The stony ground is the one that has emotional reaction, mental assent to the truth, but has not accept the truth as being a vital part of their life. They just mentally assent to the truth. The truth is not really dwelling in their heart the way it's supposed to dwell. It has not been able to develop roots so that it can stay. And you know, the Bible says when the sun comes, the sun will scorch it and then it will wither. What is supposed to, to help it to become strong is not what kills it. Yeah. <laughs> what is supposed to help it to become strong? The sun, uh, you know, the, the normal things, normal temptations that everybody goes through so that it can become stronger. Normal issues. You know, the sun rises every day. So the sun there talks about normal issues. Yeah. That you're working uh, with, 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 a, with a nice guy or a wicked boss. Things that should not trip you off will trip you off because the word of God has not taken root. If somebody is nice to you, does not mean the person wants to go to bed with you. Yeah. We all pray for people to be nice to us. But if you don't have debt, you are easily swayed by the normal thing that everybody goes through every day. Yeah. That people are not nice to you does not mean you should go into depression. Because that's what everybody goes through every day. That's the sun that is rising. But when the word of God has debt in you, what happens is that uh, uh, your, your heart starts to connect and these normal temptations will no longer sweep you away. The Bible also talks about tony heart. The tony heart. Are tons growing in your heart? Worldly worries, those are tons. The sinfulness of riches, those are tons. Are you carried away by your need for money? Everybody needs money. But Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. And when he said that, he didn't say God and Satan. He said God and money. God and mammon. He said you can't serve God and mammon. We live in a generation where money will compete with God in the life of believers. And the Bible says it creates a, a tony heart where everything that, when every time you, the word of God comes to you, the first thing you are thinking about is, is, is money. Or how well, if it's going to affect how you make money, no, you're not going to obey. Yeah, you're not going to obey. Glamorized social media, star, you know, lifestyle, status consciousness. These are tons that are growing and they choke the word of God. They choke the word of God. There are places you should not go if you want the word of God to survive in your heart. But if you want to live a kind of lifestyle, you will still show up in such places. And then they choke the word of God in your heart. There are conversations you, you should not engage in if you want the word of God to grow, if you don't want it to be choked. But if you want to be seen, uh, you know, to be the happening guy or the happening babe, you will still have that kind of conversation. There are things, evil communication, the Bible says, corrupt good morals. But when you engage in such evil communication, just because you want to put up an appearance, you are inviting tongues to choke the word of God in your heart. May God give you grace this season to uproot tongues. To walk away from places where tons come from. Uh, not to, to, to get so engrossed into the lifestyle of today that creates tons and tissues in the heart of people and chokes the word of God. God will release his grace upon you this season to escape tons in the name of the Lord Jesus. Last day today, Jesus described good ground. Good ground. Good ground is, a, is receptive. It's amenable. It's humble, it's open to instruction. It's desperate for transformation. 
And it says that good ground will produce some 34, some 60, some 100 fold. Is your heart good ground? Can he incubate the word of God for increase? That's the big question for today. Or is your heart riddled with worry, anxiety, tons, things that choke the word of God from your heart? And then you say, oh, I've been praying. I've been trusting God, but nothing is happening. Is the word of God growing in your heart? The Bible says when the way of a man pleases God, it makes his enemies to be at peace with him. Rather than focusing on your enemies, will you allow the word of God to grow in your heart so that your ways can please him, so that your thoughts can please him, so that your imaginations can align with his own imagination? That's how to see increase in your life. Because everything that was created was created by the word. Without him was nothing created that was created. All things were made by him. That's what the Bible says about the word of God. The word of God. It's a foundation for every form of creation, every form of innovation, and every form of increase. And when you allow it in your heart and in your life, what you see is a mighty increase. As we pray today, I want to encourage somebody. Proverbs 4 and 23 says, Guard your heart, guard your heart with all diligence, for it determines the course of your life. New Living Translation. It determines the course of your life. Will you trust God today? to help you to be a better goalkeeper in the goalposts of your heart, to be able to defend the things that should come in and the things that should not come in, that you will not leave the goalposts of your heart empty for anybody to just call a goal, anybody to just deposit anything there. You want God giving permission today to be the one depositing things in your heart. Yeah. That's, that's, that was where uh, the, the psalmist David was in Psalm 51. After David committed adultery with Beersheba and Nathan the prophet confronted him, David prayed a prayer. He knew that his heart had become corrupted. The heart has become tony, a tony, tony heart. The, the, the word of God in his heart has been choked. And that was why he was open to that temptation. David prayed in Psalm 51 from verse 10. He said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not Banish me from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me and restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. Will you lift your two hands with me today and say, Father, renew a clean heart within me. Give me grace to watch over my heart this season. Give me grace. I know your word is as powerful as ever. I know the truth of your word leads to transformation. But I want to be ready for transformation. Father, help my heart today. Help my heart today. Help my heart today. Somebody pray in the spirit. Pray in understanding. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we stand against every pollution. Uh, we stand against toxicity in the heart of your sons and your daughters. We ask, uh, Father, by the hand of your spirit, that you cause a cleansing in every heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody yield your heart to God today. And tell him, Lord, I know, I know that my heart has been polluted. I receive grace today. Wash me clean. Wash my heart clean. Uh, Father, give me grace to take responsibility. To take responsibility for my heart. To take responsibility for my heart. Grace to be able to guard my heart with all diligence. Somebody lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to stand guard uh, over my heart. I receive grace uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever stone uh, may be underlying on the line belief system, uh, negative esteem, whatever is making me to look away from the truth of the word of God, to believe that I'm who God says I am, I can do what God says I, I can do. If God says he has created me holy, uh, 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 a holy nation, a, a royal priesthood, and then I believe it, and I believe I can live a holy life. Oh, that's, that's what should be the confession of your mouth right now as you speak to God today. Father, I engage this process of transformation. I ask today that you help me with my heart. Take impurities out. Take the rocks out. I stand against whatever is against the word of God in my heart. Anything that is choking the word of God. Anything that is not allowing root uh, of the word, the root of the word to grow in my life. I stand against them today. I plead the blood of Jesus over my mind and over my heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we decree liberty and freedom for everyone. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. Lift your two hands with me today and just bless his holy name. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, everlasting Father. Just bless his holy name. 
Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Father, we thank you. Oh, we thank you. We thank you. The prayer of David is the prayer of our heart today. Create in us a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence and renew a right spirit within us. Thank you, everlasting Father. So I stand in agreement of faith with everyone joined to this service today to declare a new season of increase in your life. In the name of Jesus, I pray today that your hunger, thirst, and appetite for the word of God is restored. I receive the healing power of God upon you for restoration in your spiritual life. I decree and declare over you today that my God starts something new in your life this season. All around increase in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you and we give you all the glory and all the praise. As you go into a new week, I receive the blessing of God upon you. I decree that the hand of God rests upon you, that God orders your steps. This week, you are free from confusion. You are free from discouragement. You are free from depression in the name of Jesus. That sickness that, that, that is trying to keep you away from destiny fulfillment, we break the hold of that sickness this week. And we declare that it is a new beginning in your life in the name of Jesus. I receive the peace of God into your heart and peace of God into your home, peace of God into your business in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. For someone here today, I receive the peace of God over your children. That worry and anxiety over your children is over. God takes charge from this place and he restores the peace of your children in the name of the Lord Jesus. He restores peace into your home in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you and we praise your name. Go ahead and bless him and praise him. We thank you, everlasting Father. We give you all the glory and all the praise in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, I love to pray for somebody who may be saying, PG, it was as if you're, you're, you're speaking to me. In fact, I'm out of fellowship from, uh, with God. I, I said a prayer before to be saved, but I know uh, I, I backslid into sin. My heart is all over the place with all kinds of things in my heart. I want to come back to Jesus. I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I want to pray for you today. If that is you, I want to pray for you today. If somebody is saying, well, I just, I just stumbled on this. I'm not saved, but I want to give my life to Jesus. I also want to pray for you. I want to join the prayer. If you don't mind, can you put your hand on your heart like this, the way uh, 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 I'm doing right now. I want you to just put your hand and put your hand on your chest and let, let's, let's pray together. I want you to say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge that I've been sinning against you. I ask that you forgive me my sins. I want you to restore me to yourself. Today, I dedicate my life to you afresh. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Fill my heart with your spirit and give me a new beginning in the name of Jesus. Thank you for receiving me in Jesus' name. If you just say that prayer with me, I want you to go to the chat room the comment, uh, you know, section, wherever platform you're joining from. And if you're watching on TV, you see uh, one or two uh, emails and phone numbers with which you can reach us uh, with WhatsApp or a call. Please reach out to us. Let us know that you just gave your life to Christ. If you're on any of our platforms, uh, please just go to the comment and, and, and say, I just gave my life to Christ or I just rededicated my life to Christ. We'd like to send you a link with which you can connect with you, send you some vital materials that will help you to grow and become stronger in your faith. And if you're watching on TV also, you can just uh, send us a WhatsApp message, uh, send us an email, or the details are on the screen, and we'll be able to reach out to you and see how we can help uh, you to, be, to stand and to live the rest of your life serving Jesus. Uh, God bless you as you do so in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. Quickly, uh, as we uh, give to God today, which is our custom, it's our custom to give every time we come to worship together. I wanted to uh, take up your devices, uh, where, however you give. I wanted to pick it up right now. The details for how we give is now being displayed on the screen. And I wanted to, 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 to give. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. We appreciate everyone supporting ministry at the Elevation Church, whether with your tithe, your offering, or, or your pledge to, to our, uh, you know, all of uh, our projects this year. Uh, if you pledge, I want you to make it a point of duty to redeem, whether it's a monthly thing, a quarterly thing, or a one-time gift that you want to give, uh, please make sure that you, you, you are steering yourself to redeem. Also, 
if you are not aware of the projects of the Elevation Church for 2021, if you go to our website, elevationng.org forward slash partnerships, you'll see a short video that I made where I discuss uh, the church budget for the year and the projects that we're getting into. And I ask that people should support our project. So if God is laying on your heart to support our project, go to elevationng.org forward slash partnership and you, you can get information about how you can do that. Can I pray over everyone giving today? If you're giving locally, uh, uh, you, you can use any of the banks there. If you're outside of Nigeria, you can use uh, the details on the left hand side of the screen. Or the GT Bank details for or money transfer is a scaled platform where you can wire money to us and also uh, you can use the ga payment gateway on our website elevationng.org for us like giving and you can uh, use your cards to give. It's also a very secured platform. Let me pray for us as we give today. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. Our giving is our worship. We ask that you accept it. This is not a donation. This is from our heart to you and for the furtherance of your kingdom. So, Father, accept it as our worship and accept it as our gratitude to you. And your word says that if the heart remain, seed time and harvest shall not cease. As we sow our seeds today, let harvest come with speed. Let the heavens open over everyone. Send us help in the places uh, uh, that we need help, in things that money can buy and in things that money cannot buy. Let that be the testimony of everyone engaging with you and giving today. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you very, very much for supporting ministry and your givings uh, at the Elevation Church. Uh, we bless God for your life and we believe that God who sees in secret, he will reward you openly in Jesus' precious name. All right, quickly, I want to welcome you. If it's your first time worshiping with us at the Elevation Church online uh, this season, if it's your first time, please go to the comment and let us know it's my first time. Just write it there, it's my first time. Our, uh, our ministers are there, ready to welcome you. They send you a link and they want to connect with you and just, just get to know you and uh, send you a gift uh, that, that's downloadable, a uh, digital gift from the Elevation Church. So I want to encourage you to please let us know it's your first time. If it's your first time, we'd love to be a part of your life. We'd love for you to be able to join us again and again. The Elevation Church has a mandate from God to make greatness common. And now that you have joined us, we believe that if you be consistent in your joining us uh, perpetually, that the seed of greatness that God has planted in you, it will evolve and thrive in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for joining us today. Please don't forget, go to the chat, go to the comment se se section and let us know that it's your first time. Just right there, it's my first time. If you're watching on TV, you can also send us an email or a WhatsApp chat and let us know you joined us today for the first time and we would love to connect with you and send you some gift in the course of the coming week. God bless you and we look forward to having you again and again. A few announcements before we bring the service to a close. Today, later today, uh, we'll be having at 5 p.m. GMT plus one West African time uh, across our platforms, uh, the, especially the, the, the uh, online church platform. We will be streaming uh, a very wonderful uh, uh, movie. We tag this Tech Flix and Chill. Tech Flix and Chill. Uh, just in line with Netflix. Tech Flix and Chill. It's a time, movie time with family. And you can join us. The movie we're watching is called Selfie Dad. Selfie Dad is the movie that we're watching. So you join us later today, uh, 5 p.m. Uh, GMT plus one. Uh, on our online church platform, onlinechurch.elevationng.org. You will be able to join us with your family and be a part of it. And if you are in the city of Lagos, in uh, about three of our expressions, at the Island Center, at the Greater Lekki Center, and at the Mainland Center, we will be having uh, in physical in-person gathering, take place and chill, come with your family at 5 p.m. and enjoy a time of movie, time of music, and comedy with us at the Elevation Church. Uh, you can register for that on our website and choose to join us in person if you'd love to come out to be a part of it. Also, uh, to help track your growth this season, uh, please download a personal growth chart on our website, elevationng.org. You'll see a personal growth chart downloadable there and you can follow through and to just track your growth through this season of growth. I pray that God uh, will cause increase and growth to come into your life in Jesus' precious name. Also, in this season of growth, uh, in the Word of God, uh, don't grow alone. Join our small group. Join our small group. It's connectgroup.elevationng.org. Please visit that, that site and 
get information about how you can be a part of our small groups. A lot of our small groups are online and it's interest-based of people that are interested in reading, in food, in travel, in whatever you're interested in, politics, family, you know, business, you will find somebody, uh, a group of people that you can do life with, either physically or virtually. Connect groups. Dot elevationng.org is the platform and uh, you can connect and grow with other people this season. Lastly today, uh, we have our online community that you can thrive in. So visit onlinechurch.elevationng.org and subscribe and be a member of our online church. Uh, we'll be able to engage with you. You'll be able to get counsel. Uh, we'll be able to pray with you and you'll be able to make friends with other people from different parts of the world, wherever you're joining us from. Please go to onlinechurch.elevationng.org and subscribe to be an online member of the Elevation Church. It's a thriving community that will bring joy and peace into your life. You'll be able to connect virtually with all kinds of people that God will use to be a blessing to you. I hope today's word has been a blessing to you. I look forward to seeing you again on our platform on Wednesday uh, as we continue in this series of teachings on growth. Uh, and also next Sunday, uh, you know, promises to be powerful. This is a season where you should not miss any service. Set your alarm, subscribe to the platform so you get an alert when we go on live. And this season, God's grace and God's mighty hand will continue to rest upon you and your household, your growth and your increase with no, no limit. In Jesus' precious name, have a great week.